Welcome to the weekend. I'm John Caldera, president of the Independence Institute. For about 14 years or so, you tune in at this bat time and at this bat station to see independent thinking. Well, quite honestly, after doing it for 14 years, we decided it's time to mix it up, so we thought we'd give it a little facelift, a new set, a new name, The Devil's Advocate, which for some reason seems to fit very nicely. But I guarantee you it's the same old show and it's the same old me. Sorry to disappoint you there. So I thought we'd start it off with a good conversation of true wonk authority and to talk about wonk issues called net neutrality. We'll explain that from the Independence Institute. Barry Fagan, thank you for joining us here. Yeah, thanks. Pleasure now, to be now here. Now, you're also a professor down at the Air Force Academy down in the Springs. That's correct. I'm a professor of computer science at the Air Force Academy. I got my PhD in computer science from Berkeley in 1987. But Hippie. I, yeah, it's, it's a little different than uh, what I'm used to, that's true. But I should say that um, I'm here, my opinions are my own and not necessarily those of the Air Force or the Air Force Academy or the Department of Defense or the United States government. I only wish they were. So in other words, this is the please don't fire me right. disclosure. Yeah, exactly. Got please it. don't fire me. And Tony Shawcross from right. Open Media Foundation. Tell me a little bit about the Open Media Foundation, what it is you do. Uh, we're a nonprofit based here in Denver. We produce videos for the nonprofit sector. We build websites for the nonprofit sector. We operate uh, Denver Open Media, which is the city of Denver's public access TV stations. Three channels that are programmed by Wait, What channels the are those? Uh, on Comcast, it's 56, 57, and 219. And all the content there is produced by the community. It's scheduled based on votes uh, that the community votes on the shows. And the viewers. Yeah, the viewers do. And based on those votes, the programming schedule is automatically generated. So truly, Wayne's World, you're the guy who produces it. Uh, no, but I provide the resources and tools for the people who want to produce something like Wayne's World or, or something else. And the best show on, on those channels would be? What's the most Wayne's Worldly program you've got? Um, there's a show called. Uh, there's a show called. I don't watch a lot of our of our TV shows. <laughs> Clearly, uh, but uh, there's always a, a ringing endorsement, by the way. Yeah, <laughs> there's a show on Thursday nights uh, that. Um, well, the best show actually is probably Wednesday nights. Uh, Wednesday nights, there's a show called Spotlight on Students. That's all uh, youth, many of them homeschooled. That every month uh, produce a live TV show where they come up with the theme, they produce it all by themselves and, and have different guests from the community uh, star on their show. They produce it every month. Now, television is, is, is changing and fortunately here this show is broadcast on airwaves you know, with antennas and people with rabbit ears I've, I've and things like that. I've heard about that. Yeah, I've heard However, about that. most people now watch television through cable or through satellite so it's not really broadcast through through the open spectrum as much and more and more people are watching video through internet so they plug in their computer and they're watching programs like this which you can get online from independenceinstitute.org and others and that's how they watch when they want to watch what they want to watch which brings up this question of well wait a second the airwaves are for everyone and that's why the government regulates it but should the government regulate that pipeline called the internet? And that's this issue called net neutrality. Give me, give me the third grader definition. This big fight going on in Congress and the FCC about net neutrality. What is that? Sure. Um, net neutrality is um, the, the belief that the bits that go through the internet should all be treated the same. All traffic should all be treated identically as it goes through the internet, regardless of content. So in, in principle, it's a motherhood feel good kind of idea. Who could be possibly be against um, net neutrality? It turns out, in my opinion, there's a lot of problems would, with would, the would, idea. Would it be a, a fair thing as an analogy as we talk about this to think of the internet as a pipeline? And you've got some things that take up a lot of volume in that pipeline, a lot of water, and some things that don't take up a whole lot. It's a, a little bit of water. Some things take up a lot, and sometimes it gets crowded, sometimes it's not. Is that a good image when we talk about broadband? I, I think so, um, provide, in terms of when you talk about traffic and some things um, that take a lot of traffic right. and some things don't, but you have to be careful because it gives the idea that there's one, it's one single pipe. Actually, it's a whole bunch of pipes. It could be potentially millions of pipes. We don't yet know. Um, so it's not just one, as long as we understand that in reality it's not one pipe. It's a whole bunch of weird pipes all intersecting and going in different directions. Right. G give me your idea. When we, we talk about this thing called net neutrality, which is a huge issue and corporations and advocates are going to be fighting this out, but I don't think most people un understand the term. Help me understand the term. I feel like Barry's definition was, was pretty good. I mean, it's just about discriminating. Uh, on the content that's in your that's in that's in the pipes, and there's a lot of different, you know, intricacies around 
whether or not uh, you know internet service providers, people on these pipes, should at least be able to uh, treat you know treat content differently for for uh, you know like. If you're watching a video on the internet, the, the latency or the speed at which that content comes through to you, it's important that there's no interruptions. Whereas if you're getting an email from me, that's not as high priority a packet. And so a lot of internet service providers want to be able to discriminate between those kinds of packets. And I think that the fear that, uh, that you know, net neutrality advocates have is that they would use the, allow, the ability to, to discriminate against those kinds of packets in the same way they would discriminate against companies they like or don't like or right, so let, content let, they want to put some to names to this. Who owns these pipes? I mean, who put them in the ground or over the air or how, how do they, somebody had to do it. The government hasn't really laid the pipes, hasn't it usually been? Communication, ISPs, right. the, internet service the, the providers. Telcos, the telecommunications providers, um, the telephone companies, cable providers. Um, that unlike, say, the highway system which, which, with which the internet is often compared, um, these networks were um, largely, if not exclusively, privately created. They were funded by investors who, of course, e expect a return on their investment. And they're owned by these companies. So the property rights of, of the people who have uh, an ownership in these networks is, is one of the big factors at play right, here. So we're putting some names to it. We're talking about you know, Quest and other telecommunication Comcast, companies that own Sprint used to. Sprint or, or AT&T, AT Verizon. Comcast, Verizon. These are the companies that actually lay down fiber lines or put in microwave towers. They're the ones who put up the investment. They're the ones who want to get a return on, the, on, on that investment. Are, are these the right players? Mm -hmm. All right. So. When we say discriminate, give me, give me something tangible, because I, I know you guys work in the ether. I, I want to know what, what that really means. If you're Comcast, let's say, or you're Verizon, you're Quest, and you're saying, no, I, I want to charge you, you know, $10 toll to be on the highway. I want to charge you $20. Give me an example of what, what that looks like. Well, there's, there's hypothetical examples, and then there's, there's real-world examples. Hypothetical examples is like if Comcast and NBC merge, and here in the city of Denver, Comcast has really a monopoly on cable service. So if I want to watch cable, and if Comcast wants to make sure that NBC uh, is the only channel on their network that isn't fuzzy, you know, they could make sure that, the, that you know, NBC has a real benefit uh, to their viewers and the, the, you know, a benefit over all other channels. Or Google's trying to lay fiber to the home. I don't know if you heard about their recent initiative, but Google, if they wanted to, could build fiber to the home and then could give priority to content on sites they own. So uh, YouTube could get to you a lot faster than Blip or Vimeo. And, um, you know, because they own YouTube, so mm -hmm. they could say, listen, since we laid down the pipes, YouTube gets first first crack at, at those free uh, flowing lines and competitors to YouTube, well, you're going to have to wait in line and might not be as fast because we own the damn pipes. Mm -hmm. YouTube, we own that and these, these are our pipes. Are those good hypotheticals of what we're talking about when it comes to net neutrality? Well, um, yes, in terms of what the net neutrality advocates fear, um, but so much of what they're talking about is still hypothetical. It's really important. In my opinion, net neutrality is a solution in search of a problem. In fact, um, these companies are, what they're really interested in, of course, is making money. And while these are all the things that they could do, there's actually very good reasons for them to practice dis price discrimination. And network service providers are subject to tremendous market-oriented pressures, not least of which is consumers simply getting outraged that they can't get the content that they want at the speeds that they expect and the speeds that they pay for. I'm very worried about hypothetical problems versus real ones. I'm very worried about return on investment. I'm very worried about the violation of the property rights that people have in these networks. I'm very worried about the left, frankly, um, embracing this kind of regulation. I used to think that the primary threat to regulation of the internet was, would come from the right, and primarily social conservatives. I'm very... Uh, well, stop there. How do you mean? What, why would the social right want to clamp down on the internet? 